also it has the horizontal relation, dimension, which is our relationship with each other. Therefore, brothers and sisters, in the Lord's Supper, the Lord desires to meet us. He wants to meet us. And we also want to meet him, to be open to him for him. And so we lay aside all our daily routines. We put aside anything that might hinder us from hearing the voice of God and his story. We accept the Lord's invitation to this wonderful meal. Will you accept the Lord's invitation to this wonderful meal? God bless you. Thank you so much, my brothers and sisters who have served this morning. Thank you so much for every person who came for fellowship in this Sabbath school program. I would like to say the following words Thank, uh, and bring to your attention those who are serving us this morning in the Sabbath school program. I will start from the praise team, Madam Amy Ogot, say hi. I will go to the second person, pianist, Brother Matthew. I will go to the next step. Opening prayer was done by Sister Ruto Lois. Mission story was done by Sister Zawadi Ibrahim Elizabeth. Special feature was done by Brother George Landoni. Crossing prayer will be done by Kuloba Elijah. This time, I would like to thank the media team, Deaconary, for the service and all who have gathered this morning. This time is my humble appeal to every person. As we go to our classes, let us interact, let us ask questions, and let us ensure we are in small packages of our classes as we learn the word of God. This time, I would like to invite all class teachers Class teachers, kindly stand. Lesson teachers. All these lesson teachers are well prepared to teach each one of us, to guide us and be mentors. My dear fellow students, I would like to say this. Let us try as we can. We go to our various small classes for learning. Can we sit? I on duty is Bifon Minor. Thank you so much. You can stand. We have a word of prayer. Our loving Father in heaven, we thank you so much this morning. As you are going to lesson discussion, my prayer is that you be with us. In Jesus' name I pray. There will be a class baptism behind the avocado tree. Those who are baptized recently, there's a class behind the avocado tree. Let us gather there. Elders are there waiting for you. Thank you so much. Good morning. I wish to bring your attention because of the... Those who normally gather in uh, humanities, it will not be possible. Please, let's get to join any other class for today. Those who normally meet in humanities, it will not be possible today. Thank you.
next? How should we respond? Honesty prevents us from running from the complexities or even giving superficial answers that don't pass the test of a proper investigation. God is pleased with honesty and integrity. Being honest when we study the Bible builds trust. Trust between us and God. And trust is at the core of every healthy personal relationship. We also need to deal with difficulties humbly. We are not the center of all things. When we value truth over our ego's need to be right, we can learn that truth is not of our own making, but what we find through God's word. Our knowledge has limitations. When we come to the Bible for guidance with the humble, inquiring mind, we are capable of expanding our understanding of God's word in a way that a proud and arrogant person wouldn't be able to. Real achievement also requires persistence. Everything in the kingdom of God is a gift. Persistence is a gift from God, even with our Bible study. The difficulties in the Bible give us an opportunity to set our brains to work. Our determination and persistence when pursuing a solution reveals how important the issue is for us. Perhaps the experience of diligently searching the scriptures for an answer could be the greatest blessing. Remember, any time that we spend studying the Bible to find out more about its message, is time well spent. Finally, the fact that you cannot solve a difficulty does not prove that it cannot be solved. There may be a solution even if we don't see it in our limited wisdom or perhaps ignorance. What would we think of a beginner in math who, having tried in vain for half an hour to solve a problem, declares that there's no possible solution because he couldn't find none? The same is true for us in our study of the Bible. Many people declare that some difficulties are contradictions and errors simply because they cannot find a solution themselves. When some difficulties defy even our strongest efforts to solve them, lay them aside for a while, call on God and trust in Him. And in the meantime, practice what God has clearly shown to you. Some insights come only after we've been willing to follow what God has already told us. so that we can begin for those who are still walking around find a place sit down so that we can begin uh, our lesson discussion I want us to pray so that uh, we begin Okay, let us pray. Dear Lord in heaven, we want to acknowledge your presence this morning. And we call upon your presence and your guidance throughout this discussion of the lesson. Share with us from the beginning to the end for this our sincere prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this morning, I have uh, my brother as uh, my co-panelist for this uh, presentation, and I'd like him to introduce himself. Happy Sabbath. My name is John Onyango Siwo, your panelist today. Let's enjoy the study. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Siwo. Uh, without wasting much time, we are in lesson number 12 that is talking about worship that never ends, worship that never ends. Um, probably we might be having a worship that ends 
And this week, we want to be able to understand the reason behind worship that never ends. And what are some of the benefits, what are some of the things that are attached to make sure that this worship does not end? What is the motivating factor behind the worship that never ends? Psalm 104 verse 33 is our key text and it says, I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. The psalmist says that he's going to worship, to praise God as long as he lives. As we dive deeper into the lesson, we'll be able to understand what are some of the motivating factor, what are some of the driving force that drives the psalmist to make a statement that is going to sing to the Lord praises as long as he live, and also um, as long as his being is guaranteed, he is going to worship God. At some point, it is good for us to assemble as we have done. You know, at some other points, we might convince ourselves that we can just worship our God, we can just worship, uh, we can just have a worship experience in our places um, at home, at an individual basis. But the Bible, I mean, um, the lesson of this week encourages us to have a congregational worship. And by the time we are done with the lesson, we are going to understand the reason why a congregational worship is encouraged to, Christ, uh, to a body of Christian or to uh, a congregation like this. What are some of the reasons behind it? And why is it considered as an ideal form of worship? Where we come together, we sit together, we share the word of God, we become encouraged. The reason behind is I was uh, reading a verse, and I want us to um, consider it. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. I'll paraphrase it. It says, where two or three or more are gathered, the Lord says, I'm in their midst. At the same time, the book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24, it says, it is good for us to have a congregation to converge to a certain place and that place is the temple of God where God has chosen for us to worship him because it is in the congregation that we get to be united it's a congregation where we get to share our uh, different experiences and become uplifted spiritually it is a place where by the time we are down spiritually in a we are encouraged we are uplifted our faith becomes strong because of the encouragement we get from our friends and therefore the bible supports us to have a congregational worship because there are benefit there are a lot of benefits that are attached to it and therefore the psalmist puts it that I will sing to the Lord as long as I live and I will praise uh, my God uh, while I have my being. Lift your hands in the sanctuary. Being in a place like this is a symbol of a sanctuary whereby we have assembled to make a worship that is ideal, a worship that is acceptable before God, a worship that is attached um, in a worship that makes us experience a lot of um, benefit from our Father who is in heaven, that we might be able to make it endlessly, a worship that we continue endlessly to eternity. 
And uh, some, um, the psalmist says, I mean, it is depicted in the book, uh, the psalm, that worshippers are the servants of God. We are the servants of God, whom God has given us an opportunity to share our experiences to our colleague, uh, be able to uplift each one's faith uh, to ensure that his intended purpose for us to converge and to worship him because of what he has done to us. One of the things that God has done to us that will be able to motivate us to worship him is the redemptive gift. Yet, we are sinners, but God is still persuading us. He's still pursuing us. We are the one who've wronged God, but it is him who is pursuing us. It is him who is following up on what we are doing so that he might uh, make us stand on the right position. He might make us experience the goodness that he has set before us. You know, sometimes if you are given a chance to make our own decision, to make our own um, programs, our, our own plans, we are sure and guaranteed is going to fail. But whenever God is in that position, we are sure and guaranteed of success of, uh, to the end. And therefore, a sanctuary is a place where we get uplifted. A sanctuary is a place where we get to experience the goodness of the Lord, the love that he has expressed to humanity immeasurably, a love that does not even um, uh, segregate anyone, irrespective of their social background, irrespective of whatever experience you've had in life, God still extends his love to us to make sure that whatever we need, to make sure that we are part and parcel of the true worship that he intends as humanity and to be uh, basically Christians to have is attained. And that is why he puts forth us the need for us to have a congregational worship as we are doing uh, this morning. Um, I would like to also welcome my fellow uh, panelist, Brother John Siwa, to make us understand the reason why the psalmist says, sing to the Lord a new song. What's the reason behind us uh, thinking of um, singing to the Lord a new song? Brother Siwa, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Tony. Happy Sabbath, saints. Happy day. We thank the Lord for the study today that gives us a call, extends a call to us that we need to have a worship to the Lord and it's a worship that never ends. As I was going through this, I was challenged to be a faithful servant to God because he is a God who is very faithful. He is a God who is very just. He is a God who fulfills and accomplishes his good plans to us. And so, uh, I learned that as, as, as your experience and, 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 the, and the power of God's grace increases in your life, it adds you more reasons why you really need to worship God without ceasing. You'll realize that every day as you wake up, the blessings of the Lord are so new. His mercies are so new every morning. And a call is given to us that we really need to make worship to this God without ceasing. And uh, the psalmist says, uh, he's, he's questioning himself, what shall I render unto the Lord for the good things that he has done to me? And a call was extended to us this week, friends, that even me and you, when you look at your life, you'll realize that there are so many experiences that the Lord has allowed you to go through. And you, le you learn that you have nothing to pay uh, for the good things that the Lord has done for you. And a call was extended that we join the psalmist in uh, worshiping, offering worship to the Lord as a payback 
to the good things and, the, and his grace and his power to, uh, and, and his sustenance under the sun. And so a call has been extended that we, we form an, a, a character of worship that never ceases, a worship that never ends. And I love it when uh, the psalmist is saying that I will sing a new song unto the Lord. I was asking myself that could it be that the psalmist wants to compose uh, a song to the Lord, a new song unto the Lord. Oh, I learned that uh, every morning when the psalmist woke up, he learned that he had new blessings. He had new experiences with the Lord. The dimension uh, of life is different from that of yesterday. And the psalmist realizes that in, in, in terms of the blessings that the Lord has bestowed in his life, he really need to push himself to keep offering worship in a way that is different from the way he did it yesterday. And I was challenged, friends, that every day when I learn of a new blessings that the Lord has bestowed to me, I also need to compose a new song because I'm making uh, in my diary of what the Lord has done for me, there are new things. And so I'm composing a new song to praise the Lord for the new things that he has done in my life. Will you accept to this call of worshiping the Lord without ceasing and composing a new song unto the Lord. A, a, a certain question was asked by the psalmist that who may abide in your tabernacles? Who may abide in the tabernacles of the Lord? These are people, uh, when, when I was going through this, I learned that the ones whose actions, when you talk about actions, we are talking about the works of righteousness the works of righteousness. Apart from actions, the character. When you talk about the character, that is the behavior that comes from the heart. Your behavior that comes from your heart. If it is, if it is, a, if it is a reflection of the Lord, then you are one who abides in the tabernacle of the Lord. And so, I was challenged in my heart that I really need to join the psalmist in praying to attain the righteousness of Christ and also to attain a perfect character in the Lord so that I may find a place of dwelling in the tabernacle with the psalmist. You remember the previous week's study, we were talking about uh, the, the psalmist really yearned to have even a day in the sanctuary, or rather in the house of the Lord, and he said that one day is better than a thousand years spent elsewhere. And so today, he says that he really needs for, for him to be, to be contained in the sanctuary, for him to be contained in the presence of the Lord, then he really needs to attain righteousness by Christ. Uh, that is the action of righteousness and also a perfect character before the Lord in the heart so that he can fully dwell in the temple of the Lord. These friends, it gave me a conviction in my heart that I really need to pray that I attain the righteousness of Christ, that I may attain the perfect character that the Lord desires so that I may dwell in the tabernacles of the Most High to offer to him praises that never, never ends and never ceases. And then, I also remembered when I was going through this worship that never ends, you remember the, our mission as the Seventh-day Adventist is attached to the, uh, the, the message of the three angels that is also giving us a call to extend the light and the blessings of the Lord to all nations. Remember, uh, we, uh, some days back we were talking about the blessings of the Lord that flows from Mount Zion, the mountain of the Lord, and it gets to, it reaches the whole world. And so, friends, 
I was convinced in my heart that I really need to talk about the experiences. I really need to talk about the good things. I really need to talk about how the Lord has dealt with me as it forms part of worshiping. As I talk about them to, to my fellows or rather even to people who doesn't believe in God, they will come to believe that if the Lord did it for me, then it is possible that them also, the Lord can do it to, uh, to them. And in so doing, the worship of the Lord is extending to all nations and to everyone, including those people who doesn't believe and doesn't trust in the Lord. Finally, before I welcome my, my fellow panelists back, uh, in the process of worship, friends, we were warned against one thing, the worship of hypocrisy. Hypocritic worship was greatly condemned. You know what, friends? Even Christ, during his ministry, he talked about these people who loved me, those people who loved him just by the word of mouth. They, pro they were proclaiming that Jesus is Lord through their mouths, but deep inside their heart, they were following Christ for self-beneficial. And so Christ talked to them, uh, ministered to them and told them, you know what, I know that you say you call my name just by your mouth, but you don't mean it from your heart. That is the hypocrisy that Christ was talking about. Could it, I challenge myself that, could it be that I come to church just for the sake of uh, appointments? Could it be that I attend a, a congregation or other spiritual meetings just for the sake of being seen? I learned that that is a form of worship that is hypocritic and it was greatly condemned and a call was given unto us that we should stop this act of, of, of hypocrit uh, hypocritic uh, worship and worship the Lord with our heart. Worship him because he is Lord. Worship him because he is a sovereign God who is able to conquer and deliver us from all forms of bondages. And you know what, friends, as, I, as this call of, of, of worship that should never end was extended to me, I came to learn that if there be any character in me that is not in line with what the Lord intends for Christians, then I may be worshiping the Lord, or rather I may be singing the Lord's song in a strange land. And you know what, friends, when you sing the Lord's song in a strange land, you, one day, even that voice that you are using may cease. And so a call was extended that when we worship the Lord, let us worship him in truth and in spirit because he is a sovereign God. He is a majestic warrior who is able to conquer and deliver us from all our forms of bondages. Will you today hearken to this call and worship God without any form of hypocrisy? Think about it, friends. Welcome, Brother Tony. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Brother Siwa, for making us understand the reason why we should sing a new song to the Lord because of his marvelous things that he has done to, uh, to us. I was reading the book of uh, Psalm chapter 96. Uh, allow me to be there so that we can be moving at the same page. Psalm chapter 100, and, I mean chapter 96, verse 1, it says, All sing unto the Lord a new song. Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Sing unto the Lord, bless his name. Uh, shew forth his salvation from day to day. Uh, chapter 98, verse 1, the same book, that is Psalm, he says, O oh, sing unto the Lord a new song, for he hath done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm hath gotten him the victory. Friends, there are a lot of things if you are called upon to pause and be able to flash back the experiences you've been going through will motivate you to continue worshiping God. I know if each one of us is given a time to share these ex his or her experiences in life in the Christian journey, 
And uh, basically, in the whole life that you've come so far, it has been challenging to us. But God has been faithful. He has made us to come out as victors through those painful experiences. And that is the reason why we should worship God endlessly. Uh, my brother has talked about the kind of worship that we worship our God just to bring glory to ourselves, to glorify self and not our God. That is the kind of hypocrisy in worship that God does not allow us to embrace. God does not allow us to be uh, uh, subscribers of false worship. And he says in the book of um, uh, John chapter 4, verse 23 and 24, as I wind up and also open the floor for us to give comments, that is John chapter 4, uh, verse 23 and uh, 20, I mean 22 and 23. Allow me read it in your hearing. This is Jesus himself saying, You worship, you know, not what. We know what, wo what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 23, uh, 23 says, But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in truth, uh, in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. It is a point, it is a plea to us that we may sit back and be able to reflect the kind of worship we've been embracing. Is it what? Is it a hypocritical kind of worship? Is it a worship that brings glory to God? Is it a worship that uplifts the name of the Lord? Or it is a worship that you've been embracing that lifts self? It is a plea to us because God does not want any one of us to perish. That is why he is giving us this um, solid information, the truth, the guidelines of how we need to uh, conduct the right and the true worship for his own glory and for our benefit. Uh, at this point, I want us to open the floor for whoever has a comment uh, for some few minutes that we have before we wind up this. Um, and uh, it is my prayer that each row, if at least I get one, uh, to give a comment or ask a question for us, it will be good. I can see a hand in this row, that side. You can lift up your hand so that Mike can reach you this row. Can I see one? There's none. This next row. Can't see none. The extreme end. As uh, we allow our brother to share what he has with us. Welcome. Okay, happy Sabbath. Uh, I want to respond to the question that uh, why is the composer of Psalms singing a new song? Uh, number one is he is saying that uh, he is singing a new song. When you read the Psalm 149, that passage, he is singing a new song because number one, he, God, he recognizes God eh, as his maker and king. And I think uh, I'll put an emphasis on that one. We don't compose new songs because each and every morning we have milk for breakfast. But we compose new songs because God is still our maker even if we will not have breakfast. Number two, he says that uh, God is his... Uh, he, 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 Jesus Christ is his savior. So when he recognizes the salvation that God gives through Jesus Christ, he's able to compose a new song. 
Number three, when you read the passage of Psalms 149, the last section, he says that he composes a new song because at the end of it all, he is sure that the oppressed have hope that God will give them victory. So there are three key reasons why the composer of Psalms composes a new song. This is contrary to why we sing new songs. We sing for publicity, want to be seen and heard, and we sing so that we show off. But the composer of Psalms sings because of the salvation he has seen at Calvary. Amen. Thank you so much, our brother. Anyone from the congregation who has a comment or a question to ask? So? Yes, I can see a hand from the extreme end. My comment is that we ought to be holy the way the Lord is holy in order to worship Him. We ought to be perfect the way the Lord is perfect in order to worship Him. We ought to be humble, then we go to God to worship Him. Why do we worship? We worship because we have some inabilities. We have some inadequacies in ourselves. And therefore we go to a super being. And that super being is our, our God, Lord in heaven. Does the devil also worship? Yes, James 2.19, it records that the devil also trembles because as he also goes there, he has faith. So we ought to go beyond what the devil does. I want to give the last statement of the same. We see Job himself going to worship. As Job goes to worship, the devil also accompanies Job. He is not going to worship, but he is going to accuse Job. So whenever we feel uh, inadequacies in ourselves, and we feel that we are accused, that is the time we are supposed to go and crawl to the feet of Jesus and worship. And can everybody say amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much uh, for that. Can I see anyone from the congregation who has a comment before I... Oh, yes, Dr. Wanya. Uh, this has been a great study. Uh, the book of Psalms has been a very, very great study. And uh, I hope that uh, the things we have been studying will reverberate with us for a very long time to come. One of the things that is pointed out in uh, this lesson of worship that never ends is that uh, a final topic for consideration in Psalm 146 to 150 is the use of live instruments in our devotion. And so as you look at the book of Psalms, I'm uh, looking at the teacher's edition, that's where I'm reading through on this particular lesson. And uh, here in Psalm 146 all the way to Psalm 150, you have seven musical instruments that are mentioned that uh, they are used in this particular book. There is the harp, there is the timbrel, there is the trumpet, there is the lute, and the stringed instruments, flutes, and loud clashing cymbals. My question that I would like to bring to class now is, are there other musical instruments? For example, here in the church, I can see a lot of uh, musical instruments probably that are not mentioned in this particular psalm. The piano is not mentioned here, and yet uh, it is a very great musical instrument today. Are there some uh, musical instruments, particularly within the African traditional context, that could be greatly used in worshiping God today. 
uh, as a part of those things that we can bring in order to make our worship uh, meaningful to God. Thank you. If I had a question, I can see Professor Bename is ready to respond to that. Happy Sabbath. Happy day. I'm not responding to Dr. Pastor Wahonya's question. Yes. But I want to respond to the previous speaker. He made a com in his comment, he said that the devil worships God as well. I want to refute that statement. Satan does not worship God. Even though Satan goes to church with us, Satan comes into the church, but he goes there to accuse God's people. He remains inside the church, but he keeps on accusing God's people and telling God, don't accept the worship of this person because he has done this and this and this. That's what he did when he came before God and talked about Job. He was accusing Job before God. He says, God, Job worships you because you have given him, the, you have laid a very great foundation of wealth around him. That is why he worships you. So Satan does not worship God. Though he understands everything in the Bible, because he was also in heaven, and he was chest down. Right now, he never worships God. In fact, if he uses musical instruments, he will use those instruments to mock God rather than worship. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that input. There's a question. Yes, Prof. Can you give it to... Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, I'm trying to respond to Dr. Wahonya's question, but I may not full, fully answer the question. But what I can say is that, uh, you know, Satan was a musician in heaven. And he knows all this equipment. And the danger that we have been facing as a church is that when we bring this equipment, sometimes we don't use this equipment the way it is supposed to be used. Satan knows how to use the musicians in a way that we can deviate, easily deviate. And that is why, as a church, we have been more keen on the type of equipment that we use in the church. But those of us who have been in other countries like India, when you go to an Indian Seventh-day Adventist church, you will see the tabla, the equipment. When the Indians don't hear tabla, they know they have not worshipped. Until you have hit the tabla like this, then they know God is around. So, each country has its own uh, system or way of worship using the equipment. We are yet to sit down as a church, maybe, to identify which instruments can be used. He has listed many equipment. But if we are not careful in some of this equipment, we may find ourselves deviating from what God wants us to do. So it is our plea that when we are using this equipment, let us use it in the right way it is supposed to be used. I think that's all. Thank you so much. Allow me to welcome my fellow panelists to make a statement. We want to respond to that in one minute's time before we wind up. Thank you. Thank you so much, brethren. We're so glad for you being with us, joining us in worship of the Lord. A call has been extended to us today that our worship to the Lord should never cease. And also to add on what uh, Dr. has said, it's true that every in musical instrument is meant to serve the Lord, in, to worship the Lord. But the devil, as a, a prophet said, has used it in, in, in glory of his, of his self and the glory of self. And so a warning is extended to us that these things, as we use them in worship, 
we should only use them to honor and glorify God because the Bible says, everything that has breath, let him worship me. And even using the instruments, we can use them to worship and glorify God. And my final comment uh, is about the hypocritical worship. In case you'll, you'll, uh, you'll bow down to this hypocritical worship, then the Lord will never de uh, delight to your prayers, or rather to your requests. And so, maybe some of our prayers are not answered because we are just mentioning them by the word of mouth, but they are not coming from our heart. Let our worship today, friends, come from the heart, not from the mouth. And the Lord will hearken and answer us, and his blessings shall overflow us in Jesus' name. Amen. Just one verse to read in your hearing, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31, it says, Whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever you do, I want us to uh, consider that phrase, whatsoever you do, do it to the glory of God. Despite the fact that there is uh, not all the instrument that we use has been mentioned in the Bible, but let us do it. Let us use them to glorify God. Before, because the Bible says in everything, as just mentioned, whatever we eat or drink or whatever we do, anything that we do, do all in the glory of God. May God bless us all in Jesus' name. Let's rise for the word of prayer. Shall we believe and pray? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, glorify your name for your good love and care. As you began this, Lord, we call upon your presence to journey with us. Thank you so much for having interpreted for us the words that were recorded in our absence. I pray, Lord, that may our worship be a worship that comes from the heart. May we, uh, hypo hypocrisy never find a place in our hearts, but may we be fully convicted that whatever we do, whatever we eat, whatever we drink, any form of uh, anything that we touch, let it be uh, that which brings honor and glory to your name. May you bless us in this Sabbath, Lord. Do not pass us by as you bless your people in this day. May you hearken to our voices of praises and worship that at the end of the day, our prayers may be a reality because we pray, trusting and believing in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless us. another, we've all had this experience. The bright side is that the vast majority of texts in the Bible present no difficulty at all. There's no need to allow the small number of hard ones to reduce our trust in the reliability and power of God's Word. But the question is, when we are faced with a difficult text, how should we respond? Honesty prevents us from running from the complexities or even giving superficial answers that don't pass the test of a proper investigation. God is pleased with honesty and integrity. Being honest when we study the Bible builds trust. Trust between us and God, and trust is at the core of every healthy personal relationship. We also need to deal with difficulties humbly. We are not the center of all things. When we value truth over our ego's need to be right, we can learn that truth is not of our own making, but what we find through God's Word. Our knowledge has limitations. When we come to the Bible for guidance with a humble, inquiring mind, we are capable of expanding our understanding of God's Word in a way that a proud and arrogant person wouldn't be able to. Real achievement also requires persistence. Everything in the kingdom of God is a gift. Persistence is a gift from God, even with our Bible study. 
The difficulties in the Bible give us an opportunity to set our brains to work. Our determination and persistence when pursuing a solution reveals how important the issue is for us. Perhaps the experience of diligently searching the scriptures for an answer Happy Sabbath, everybody. We want to thank God that we can be here today. It is not because of our righteousness. It is not because that we are good, that we are alive today, because it is only because of the grace of God. And God performs this miracle in us every day. When we go to bed, we don't know what happens in the night. And when it is time, he wakes us up. And so we give him glory, we give him honor. So we want to praise him today. Remember, we are in the Passion Week. And so God suffered and died for us. And because of, his, of what he has done, it is well with us. Shall we pray? Father, I want to thank you so much for this morning. As we praise you, we do invite all the hosts of heaven to sing with us and to rejoice with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our first song is from him, 530. This well with my soul. All right, before we sing, I'm just going to do something which I didn't plan. It just came to me right now. We are going to ask somebody from the audience to begin to sing stanza one, and we just join. Somebody with a powerful voice. I know my brother. Omari has a very powerful voice. Brother Omari, can you give Brother Omari a microphone, please? He will sing stanza one. Please stand. He will sing stanza one, and then we join him. Let's listen closely. Sorry for picking you up, but we are here for worship. 530.
stanza. In the chorus, in the last stanza, we want all the ladies in the house to sing, it is well. And then men will respond, and you keep on responding till the end of that song. Stanza three, here we go. for that solo. Everybody just get ready. We may ask you to do a solo for us in church because we have come to worship God. Our next song is Crown Him with Many Crowns. 223. 
song is 154 154 Jesus Christ went to the cross and died for me and died for you so when we look at that when we survey the wondrous cross, we remember what Jesus has done for us. That's what we're going to sing. When I survey that wondrous cross, pianist once again. We're going to sing this as softly as possible. When I survey the wondrous cross, on with the Of us here. Stanza two, only ladies, 
and the press team here. Stanza two, ladies and the press team and the band. sing it and it's going to be done by everybody. We are going to recite it. The band will play and we are going to recite it according to the way the band plays. Here we go. We are reciting it. Do not sing it. Here we go. See them from head. Let's try again. Let's try again. Alright. Band, do not play. One, two, the whole Congregation, recite that stanza. Stanza three. See from his head, his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did a such love and sorrow meet? Or Thorns compose so rich a crown. Now we sing the same stanza, everybody. Alright, band coming. See from his head, his hands, his feet. So Even though we've been doing it softly, we are going to sing now very loud and put in all the all the parts that you can afford. Stanza four. Here we go. What a see that we still have the same similar song but a different tune we are going to do that one five five it's also when i survey the wondrous cross but we are going to sing it in the tune that is written in the music 155 Since I was under 
near the cross. Jesus keep me near the cross. 312, 312. Jesus keep me near that cross where you died.
We have come to worship you. Accept our worship. That you alone be seen, be heard, be accepted as a savior and a friend. And may your spirit fill the place of worship with the glory and honor, we pray in Jesus' name. Dear congregation, God's people, welcome to this blessed time of worship. In the Sabbath school today, if we go to the section of Friday, there is a quotation related to worship, and it reads this way. Although God dwells not in the temples made with human hands, yet he honors with his presence the assemblies of his people. He has promised that when they come together to seek him, to acknowledge their sins, and to pray for one another, he will meet with them by his spirit. But those who assemble to worship him should put away every evil thing. This time as we are here, we acknowledge that God is here with us. And we have come to worship him, to thank him for his goodness, to also express our request to him and worship him. I pray that this time will be a blessing to each one of us. As we are here, I would like to request the song leader to come and lead the congregation so that we can sing the fellowship song and greet one another. Then we move with other activities related to this worship. Shall we rise up and greet each one of each other? thank God for his goodness. Today we don't have many announcements, but we want to call your attention on one key event, the Holy Communion, which is going to take place today at 3 p.m. And this will cover the sundown service, so kindly prepare adequately to experience the love of God as we come together to this blessed service. After the church, members are asked to patiently wait to be ushered out by the deacons and deaconesses. May the Lord bless all of us at this blessed hour of worship. There are many people involved in this service today, those who are serving this congregation. Some are over there, the media team, 
Over here we have the band, but also the pianist, Brother Degu. And also here in the front, we have uh, other people who are here ready to continue serving this congregation. We have our sister Immaculate, who will be working for the offertory. She will be working for the offertory reading. But also there is a Malek for the scripture reading. And then Dr. Kasai, the elder, who will come in for the pastoral prayer. And uh, our beloved chaplain, Pastor Dr. Mumbo, will share the bread of life with us. So we continue to pray that the Lord will be with us and bless us. Let us stand and sing the opening song, which is hymn 246, 246. We all stand and sing together. Before we sing, all ministerial students in the house, can you raise your hand? All ministerial students in the house, all right, you are going to do stanza one of this song, and all of us will chorus with you. Here we go, pianist once again. This is a privilege we are given to bring our burdens to the Lord. 
So I will request that those who have a special request to lift their hands as we will be praying. And we who are in front, we will kneel down after the song while you may remain standing. much this morning for allowing your children to come here and worship you. We thank you for the lamb who shed the blood for our salvation. He is worthy of our worship. You are worthy of our worship. So we pray, Lord, that you accept our worship, that it gives you glory. Lord in heaven, we know that we not always walk in your path, but we also believe that you are a God of mercy. Maybe someone has a sin in his heart now. As we are talking to you, Lord, we pray that you grant mercy upon the sinners, that you may clean us with that blood of the Lamb, that was shed on the cross, that you will not count guilt upon us. Today, it is a high Sabbath, a Sabbath in which we remember the body that was broken for our sin. The day we remember the blood that was shed because of our sin. Thank you for this great sacrifice, Lord and help your children gathered here this morning to get benefit of this uh, sacrifice. Father, your children have come with burdens. They have lifted their arms. You are the omniscient God. You know what they, are, they need. We know, we, you know their problems. Answer each one according to your great mercy, so that at the end of the day, they may praise you for having answered their burdens, for having lifted their burdens. Father in heaven, at this moment, we remember those who signed the engagement, the commitment to follow you wherever you go, in baptism last Sabbath. We pray, Lord, that you help them to keep faith. As we are washing with them, Lord, continue to fill them with your Holy Spirit. And they will be, when they will be participating uh, in this uh, divine uh, program, that you become part of their lives, Lord. Father in heaven, you have selected your servant, Dr. Duncan Mumbo, to be the one to break the bread of life this morning. I pray, Lord, that you anoint his lips so that what he will speak may come straight from you. And I pray that you prepare our hearts to receive this message, not only to listen to the message, but to apply it in our daily life. 
we pray for the country of Kenya that you may continue to give peace. We thank you for the improvement in the economical aspect and we believe that you will do more, Lord, because you love Kenyans. They are your people. As we pray for Kenya, we pray for the whole Africa, Lord, that you may continue to help the, all the countries, especially that you may bring peace so that this continent can develop and help to spread the gospel before the Lord Jesus comes again. We pray for this university. We pray for the leadership, the administrators. We pray for the faculty and staff. We pray for each student, Lord, that each one of us receives the part of blessings you have promised to those who keep the Sabbath. We pray for our uh, online listeners who are also worshiping with us, that you bless each one of them, that you also lift their burdens, that the blessings that you will be getting here, that they also uh, receive them, and that, uh, Lord, when time will come to unite your people, that they may also join us, not online, but physical, physically in front of your, tr your throne of glory. We pray that you will be with each one of us and that this uh, program will give you glory and that you have heard our prayers for we pray this in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Spirit of the living God fall afresh on me Happy Sabbath, happy day. It is time to worship God through giving. And we are going to read from the book of Mark, chapter 12, verse 41 to 44. The Bible records, Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offering were put and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amount. But a poor widow came and put in two very small copper, copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth but she, out of her poverty, put in everything, and, she's, and she had to live on. As we pondered on what to give, the spirit of prophecy tells us, not only should we faithfully render to God our tithes, which he claims as his own, but we should bring a tribute to his treasury as an offering of gratitude. Let us, with joy, joyful heart, bring to our Creator the first fruit of all His bounties. Our, our choices, possessions, our, our best and holiest service. 
God loves a cheerful giver. Kindly transfer your tithe and offering to the church and pay bill number 821078. 821078. Kindly indicate the purpose of giving and your name. May deacon and deaconesses serve the congregation. At this point, I'm going to welcome the BUC band for offertory music.
tithes and offerings into the storehouse of God. Shall we stand? the gift of life and we thank you for the gift of tithe and offerings. May you, uh, may you forgive us our sins and accept our tithe and offering for this my prayer in Jesus name. Sabbath, happy day, open your Bibles, our scripture comes from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 63, verses 1 and 2, I'm still waiting for you, Isaiah, Isaiah 63, verses 1 and 2. I repeat for the last time, Isaiah 63, verses 1 and 2. The Bible says, Who is this who comes from Edom with dyed garments from Bozrah? This who is glorious in his apparel, traveling in the greatness of his strength. I who speak in the righteousness, mighty to save. Verses 2. Why is your apparel red and your garments like, like one who trades in the wine press? May the scripture be blessed. A musical item, Soul Sisters. Soul Sisters, are they here? Yes, please come and sing for the glory of God. Sabbath, happy day.
the Lord. Uh, we thank God that the Sabbath is here. And I want to put it to you that in the school calendar, this is the most important Sabbath of the calendar. While many of us think it is Wose, I agree but I don't agree fully. While in Wose we have a guest that will invite from someone to come to share the word of God with us. In this one, the Lord is present in the house. And in this afternoon, the table will be set where we will be allowed. By the way, the only time we are allowed to officially eat in the temple or in the church is this Sabbath. Because there will be the body of Christ, there will be the blood, both symbolized by the bread and wine which will be taken here in this church. That invitation to the table, some of us will ignore it to their own harm and doom. So I want to welcome everybody who is listening to us, those who are here and whatever. The Sabbath is here with us. And this Sabbath is special, I said it yesterday, in three areas. Number one, it is Sabbath of the Lord where we relax, the Lord is here, where we can stop all our business knowing that the Lord takes control of everything we do. Yes, it is a high Sabbath because we have the Lord's Supper added to this Sabbath, which is not done every Sabbath. But if that's not enough, those of us who know it, this week, I like how it is put in the Bible and uh, how it is being uh, addressed. I hope those of you who have taken uh, 
uh, some courses in the basic Bible have known what we call the Passion Week. The Passion Week starts this very week tomorrow. It's the most significant week in the life and history of the Christians, and we are happy. But it's also a very disturbing week because it's the week when human beings express their rejection of an offer that is given freely. They turn their back on the Savior, their Creator and their Redeemer, and they decide to kill him. He goes to the cross for you and for me to make a final statement. I came and I loved you, and how I wish you not have rejected me. So, there'll be a lot of things happening this week, the times, the arrests, the betrayals, the shoddy trials. Then on Friday, which was yesterday, and I'm glad they still call it the Friday. It has never changed. By the way, that puts a nail on those who are still discussing which day is the Sabbath. It is very clear. That has not changed. We still have the Good Friday. Why well, was it Good Friday? The day Christ was, was crucified. Then on the day following the Sabbath, he rested in the grave. Having accomplished what brought him here. Then on the Easter Sunday, which is the first day of the week, he rose. Nevermore. To face death. And as liberated those who accept him because he has died on their behalf. And I've also signed a doom for those who reject him because surely they will meet death and mingle with mercy. So this week is heavy. And this Sabbath is significant. And I want to thank you, all those who have come here. Allow me to do three things before we get into the world. Today we would allow us to go past 12 because there's somebody who came in my office this morning. You know, yesterday when I was preaching here, I made a call. And somebody came this morning in my office and said, Pastor, now I've decided I want to be baptized. And those who know me, if there's something that ick me, that make me be the happiest person, is when a young person takes her or his time and commit that life to Christ. You never go wrong with that choice. So I will ask the, the board members and the church members to allow us. And we started, because it came this morning, I don't know if the water will be ready, but we will tidy a little bit to allow the water to come some level so that we baptize that person here. Is that clear? And uh, the lady is here. Is the church clerk uh, anywhere there? No, Martha Mamba, are you anywhere near? Yes, please just come. Just walk straight and come. And uh, just come. Just come, please. Dr. Martha Mambo is our church clerk. There is no important business than when there are people who want to be baptized. And I wish there will be some who want to join, but even if there's one, we will thank God for that one. Ruto, give us the name of the lady. The lady is there with you, and they're almost dressed like they have the same color. I don't know, almost the close color. There's just one name that we'd want you to bring to us. And uh, bring us that name to, to Martha. The lady is here with us. She said, Pastor, I have decided it's a fourth year. That means she has been here for long. And she said, I asked, I said, Pastor, I've decided. Now, when she's decided, who, who am I to tell her no? Where did I get authority? Tell me, where will I get it? So give Martha the name as the church clerk to bring us that name. And if there's anybody who would want that chance that is opened again, we will not close the door on you. But at least she has come. We have interviewed her. She has said, Pastor, I am decided. So people are looking there, yet you are the one who is still not baptized. We need to look for you. you now, while you are checking who that person is, if you ask me you are the one, I would have asked to come. Dr. Martha Mambo, bring us a name. We shall, 
We shall bring before this congregation today the name of Frida Denya, who has given herself to the Lord. She shall be baptized today. We want to move that she be accepted into Baraton University sub church membership, subject to baptism. I so move. It's moved. There a second. A second. Those in agreement, let me see your hand. Freda, you can come. We'll baptize you here. Just stand. There's no need to fear. Just stand. The lady is here with me. She came into my office. She walked. She's a tall, beautiful. You know, Baraton has not only beautiful ladies, but this is tall. This is the, <laughs> the ones that, uh, if they were in, in, in South Sudan, you will pay not less than 500 cows. You are here. Welcome. This is Frida, and we'll baptize her today. Thank you for your choice that you have made. God bless you. So thank you very much. You can be close to Frida. So if there's anybody who would want to join, that's why we will we'll tingle a little bit with the program to allow the water level to reach a place that we could baptize. Is that one clear? Second thing that I would want to do, I have here an invitation of one of our members who is still, I think, is in the house. Miriam, Miriam, are you in the house? I saw you just stand. <laughs> this is the last Sabbath, and because by 31st, she will be married. She's gone. She's taken. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> now, <laughs> Miriam is extending an invite to all of us. She has written a card here that on 31st Sunday, the wedding will be done, and there will be re reception there at the place called Severin Gardens from 1 p.m. You are all invited. Do you want to invite them? So you are invited. And now those who have been trying to now know that is somebody's property. So keep off that area. <laughs> keep off. And don't go that I'm coming to bid you by. Hello. <laughs> so that is an important thing I wanted to. Then we also had uh, people who we baptized, and whenever we get Bibles, we give them. We got two. We have given one in the class. We have another person that would also get in the Bible. Another one we have given this morning. This we are giving now to Mwangi Esther Julia. We baptized her last time. She wanted a Bible. We said we will give her a Bible, a new Bible. Where's Esther Julia? Is she in the house? Because if that, you miss this opportunity. Esther, I met her this morning myself. Mwangi Esther Julia. Is she around? Please come. As he comes, uh, before I preach, I will just ask some of us who have come. You know, this is the house of God. I will not tire in repeating it. Some people come and they have a, a clear pattern. Let me clear the Bible first. Then I'll say what I want to say. I hope you'll read the Bible. We baptize Allah and uh, we promise to give Bibles and we have given. We have given two today. So if you have Bibles that you still want to give, you can bring them. We will give them to our members to have them. Now I was making a statement and let me repeat it again. How I wish that all of us who come here, and that's what I'm going to preach about, are blessed. Now I want to tell our dear student, this is the only place where we encounter God. Not the teachers, not whatever, we encounter God. But there are some of us who think they are come here to fulfill a requirement. So they sit at the back as far as they can. They are always in phone. When people say stand up for prayer, they are not standing. I watched some people are there and there's some here, I couldn't see them. And my heart bleeds for you. You are making a mistake that may give you a scar you may never recover from. Please, when you come to the house of God, if you come, if you don't want to come, don't come, please. But if you come, be ready to worship. Do you hear me now? I'm just telling you because I saw it with my own eye when I was standing here, and I thought I would not be good to let you know that what you are doing is bad. And even as I talk back there, there's a lady busy doing her own things. There, next to that gentleman at the corner. I can see her from here. Even as I speak, the lady is busy putting a phone on the face, looking for things that can be looked elsewhere, not in the church. And, and I plead with you. 
don't push so hard. Some people, when people say stand, they don't stand. It, suppose we, 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 something happened and we don't stand. Will we be called to pray for you to stand? So I don't want to reach there. <laughs> Otherwise, I want us to have a blessed Sabbath day. Now, let's pray before we turn to God's word. Loving Father, we want to come to your word. On this very special Sabbath, when we remember you as our creator and our redeemer, when the table will be set in this church and all are invited, when we remember the week that was very shameful but yet very rewarding, the Passion Week, come and speak to us. Use me as an, an, an instrument in your own hand to convey your message of love and our blessings, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I'm doing what I promised to do. Remember, how this text has been read in this church, but I, I gave a promise to revisit it. Those of us who were there yesterday, God always returns. And I want to let Ruto know that when he returns, don't think he's returning all the time to bless us. You think that's okay. But those who do not receive blessings receive the other opposite. But he, he, God who always returns. And so when we return to the book of Isaiah, I would put a different eyeglass on this one. If you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Isaiah. If you are there. And I'm glad those who carry the actual Bible. I'm very happy. And I'm seeing people opening their Bibles. May God bless you. Yes. By the way, as we open the Bible, this communion service has got two main things that it dispenses out. Do you want to know the two? Number one is about forgiveness of sins. That's why we wash. And that was is not done in many churches. They, I don't know why they ignore it. What is there in John? Because the communion service or the Lord's Supper is there so that sins that we have committed may be done what? What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the what? That is the one primary occasion. We admit we are sinners. We accept. But we know we cannot save ourselves. And that's why we come to the church so that we are forgiven and set free. We are washed. Just like when we run, do other things, we become dirty. And how do you do when you are dirty? You smell. So when you take a bath, even if you don't have a perfume, it takes the, the chaff and the smell and the dirt away from you and leave you clean. This service is designed so that sinners like you and me would be washed and be washed clean by the Almighty God. And now I pray that you'll take charge of that one. But the other part, the second one, which is addressed and which will be addressed in this sermon, is the, the act of blessing. Not only are we forgiven during this one, we want to be blessed and that's why when we come to the table to eat with the Lord, the Lord would want all of us to be blessed. And by the way, this week, even as we talk now, and I want to say this one, my heart goes when those of us, I think all of us have known, some of our students, they may not be ours here, but some of our comrades from a university going to do something in Mombasa got a very ugly accident, what you call fatal. That means because it involves death. And up to now, how many people have died? Those who know. And the sport, there was about 11. But this has continued to go. People die. And even us, one of us, she called me yesterday. One of us got a very bad accident and broke all the hip bones, the two of them. And deep cuts there. One of us, one of our PhD students, Asefades, Frida, Rico, got a very bad accident. You know, in this life, what people do not understand, you do not know what's there for you tomorrow. And that's why this university offers you an opportunity, not only to be forgiven and be blessed, but to be enrolled in eternity where those things will not be heard of. You know, when we still stay here, death, calamities, hunger, those other things, betrayal, will continue to happen. 
But yet, God is given an opportunity to accept him so that when those things happen, our fate and eternity is sealed. So my heart goes to those young people and their families. And that's why when we come to worship God, how I pray that we will be able to accept him as our savior and our friend and our sins are forgiven so that we are put right with God for eternity. Whatever happens is history now. That book of Isaiah 63, verse 1 and 2, we addressed the Edom issue. But there was the part that I would want to address, which is in verse 2 today. We are agreed, even that name, Esau and Edom, all mean what? Red. So that one I don't want to go to. But I want to start from verse 2. It says, why is your apparel? Why is your clothes and garments? Why are they red? Why? Why is that red? Why is that apparel red? And thy garments like him that traded or that trades in the wine press. I want to address that today. Why would the Lord, and we had agreed that the part of God would come red? Why would he come with the garment also? Why would he become red? That is blood. But why was there also a red garment also? Two things. Red blood, which is always red, except with the octopus, but also a what? A red garment. Why? To help us understand this text, we will go back to the first Bible book. Which is which book is that one? What is the first book of the Bible? Let's go there. I want us to address that one. That's what we want to address for now. And I'm glad that in my training and in my whatever, uh, we believe that both the Old Testament and the New Testament are all inspired. There are some of us in the room who only know things in the Old Testament. But there are some of us also who think only New Testament. But we, we know that the entire Bible is a work that is brought to us by God and every part of it is good for all of us. So I go to this story, and I, I, the, the story is fitting in Genesis 27. The story is also fitting. So go there, Genesis 27. The story is fitting. In every aspect, the story is fitting. Now I'm glad for those who are looking at their Bibles. Genesis 27. You know, when you look at that, and I want you to get this one, the first point that I want to pin down. Now it came to pass, when Isaac was old, and his eyes were so dim, that he could not see, that he called Esau, his elder son, and said to him, my son, and he answered, here I am. Then he said, behold, now I am old. I do not know the day of my death. You know, that's a first point. I am old. I've lived long, but I know that I will not live forever in this world. There's something that comes in the way which is called what? Death. And nobody knows when you're going to die. Now you don't need to be old to die. People die even when they're young, even when they're still birth, even when they're toddlers, people die. By the way, you need to know and understand in this world of sin, there is death. And death came because of sin. So he says, I know I'm going to die. I don't know when, even though I have lived old. You may be old and die young. You may be young and die before you get old. And all of us here, sadly but truly, we are all candidates of death. Look at your neighbor. Do you look at your neighbor? I want you to take, take around and look at your neighbor. The person you see is a candidate of death. <laughs> <laughs> it's only you don't know when, how, and where. I'm telling the truth. So, I saw, this gentleman here brings the point home. I am old. But I know I do, will not live long because in this world, nobody lives forever. It's a fact. No one lives forever here on this earth. No one. Whether you are a big man or you are a small man, whether you are nothing or whatever, you don't live forever. 
Now, so what do you do before you die? He said this one. So before I die, in verse 4, and in verse 10, he makes this statement, and make me some food, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless you before I die. So before he dies, there will be some time to be eaten, and after that eating, there will be blessing, and whatever now happens, whether he dies, he will die when he knows he has blessed his son. And if you go in verse 10, that concept still comes. Then you shall take it to your father, that he may eat it, and that he may bless you before his death. It is very clear that blessings comes before death. He said, now before I die, I have to have eaten, I want to bless you. The, pro the program of today, the service of today, this week is about God who is about to die to bless us. By the way, I, I, I was surprised this morning. I was just preparing for what is going to happen in the afternoon. Then I was this time check. let me now go to the Gospels. And I went to Matthew. <laughs> and I said, wow, Matthew 26. I want you to see how the Bible is linked. Matthew 26, verse 1 and 2. Matthew 26 in the New Testament. Now, that's why you said we have freedom to go there. I want you to see verse 1 and 2. I'm reading. Now, it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these things, that he said to his disciples, verse 2, you know that after the two days in the, is the what? And the Son of Man will be delivered to be what? What will happen to him after those two days? So he said, it's two days to Passover. But after the Passover, what will happen to me? I will die. But before I die, what will I have to do? Then he gives the instruction. You must go to a certain place and prepare the place so that we will eat. So that after I have done that, I've eaten with you, I will bless you, and then I will die. And exactly that's what took place. Before he died, he put the Lord's Supper before them. If you read Matthew 26, by the way, 26, after they've eaten, they had a feast. You know that, bring that one up. Some people may not know. Matthew 26, 26, bring it up. You see that the context is very clear. And as they were eating, what were they? The disciple is with them. Jesus took broad bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to the disciples. Said, "Take, eat this, my body." Then, when you go there, he also took the cup. Just put twenty-six. And as they were eating, now I want verse twenty-seven. I want verse twenty-seven. Then he took the cup. And gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. Verse 28. For this is my word. Now, this is my word of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the word. Do you see it? What I said? Verse 29. For, but I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day. When I drink it anew with you in my father's kingdom. You see, everything is here. The same way it was there, the same way it is here. He says, I am about to die. But before I die, we will eat. And after eating, I will leave you blessed people. And that promise is given. It will only come again when I come on that day. That glorious morning, we will eat again with you. Before that, I want to leave you forgiven and blessed. You didn't get me. Before that, I would want to give, leave you what? Forgiven, washed, and blessed. Let's go to Genesis where we were. So, this is a father who wants to bless his son. But the mother is here dropping. Said, oh, oh. So, it is the other one, I want this one to be blessed. The mother knows that is the father who blesses. So I said, I want this one to be blessed. 
Now, this one, who was not to be blessed was called who? Now, those who, they are there in Genesis 27. Who was this one? Huh? You know, I want you now to get, because I'm coming to where I, I will a little bit change. But before I change, I want to, to go slowly with you. This lady called who? Huh? You are there on 27. The lady is called who? Rebecca. Says now, who do I want to be blessed? Jacob. But the person to be blessed was who? I want you to listen to me now. Because from now on, if you miss it, you miss something. Who was decided by the father to be blessed? But who is being prepared to be blessed? Now there's a problem. And I want you to listen to me now. There's a problem. The person to be blessed is who? But the person who the mother wants to smuggle in is called who? Jacob. But how will he do it so that he will be blessed and not to be cast, which he said here, that if the father discovered that I'm, that's what I don't want to go to, if the father discovered that I'm playing tricks, I will do what? Because he has been a deceiver. By the way, I want you to understand there, all of us may be deceivers. We may be deceiving people, deceiving ourselves. But God knows it, God doesn't know about it. We can cover ourselves, you know, it's very good. So what do we do for deceivers? What do we do for those who don't deserve blessing, yet they want blessings? I will repeat it slowly now. What do you do to one who is not for blessings, but you want to be blessed? Who do you want to do for those who are deceivers? Those who have done something that are not right, yet they want blessing. What must be done to them for them to be blessed? Rebecca plays the role he did not know so well that finally Jacob is blessed. So what did he do? Now, go with me now. Now I'm ready to read the Bible. And I'll take them here. Verse 15. I want to see Genesis 27, verse 15. So I want you to see what Rebecca did. Now we want to hear what is the real thing. Then Rebecca took the choice what? Close of who? So you see, he knows this person might be covered. He's the same person, but we want to do something that will cover. You know, I thank God for, the, for dressing. It covers people. There's some people who are so ugly. If you take the dress, you don't want to see. But now thank God for dress. If they put them on, you may think this look good. And when the clothes are removed, some of us, you may not have an appetite, but let me not go there. <clears throat> now let me come back slowly. <clears throat> so he knows for you to be not be identified so that you will get the blessings anyhow, there must be the clothes of who? Now let's read that one now, 15. So they took the choice clothes of who his elder son Isu, which were with her in the house, and put them on Jacob, the younger son. The first thing that she did, he wanted to bring the clothes. Those of us who know the word atonement is to cover. The word atonement means atonement, but you are covered so that you are not supposed to get, you don't get. She so said, I will take a clothes and cover you because I know who you are. You don't deserve to be blessed. You have done things, you have been a deceiver. You have lied. You have tricked people. You have done, and some of us, if not all of us, who have not deceived here? Who has not lied here? What have you not done yourself? I'm talking to you now. But God knows that one. Rebecca knows that really deceivers, if they go as deceivers, they will be cast, not be blessed. But if they're covered by a cloth that is not their own, if they are protected by the cloth that they didn't make for them, the cloth that belongs somewhere else, they will be able to pass the test. I put it to you and to you too. The only reason why you will be blessed today is not that you are right, but because somebody brought his own clothes and covered us even though we are sinners so that well, let me read. Let's go continue reading before I make that statement. Verse 15.
and she put the skin, verse 16 now, she put the skin, that's the second thing he did. So, and she put the skin of the kids of the goat on his hands on the smooth part of his neck. Now, I want you to listen to that one also. What was the first thing done? Let, let's talk. What was the first thing put on him? The clothes of who? But was that all? The arms were still bare. The neck was still not or or whatever. So he said, what do we do? Okay. A goat, a lamp, a small goat was done what? Slaughtered. To provide what? This area to cover these hands. So then the blood, that was a wet one. It was not a dry one. Because it did not dry it. It cast it there. They make it. They take the skin of the goat to cover the arms and the neck. Now, what you do know, what happened to the goat? It was dead. But what happened to, to Jacob? He's covered. No, you didn't get me. Now, let's talk. What happened to the goat? And what happened to Esau? No, he's not there. He's, what happened to Jacob? He's covered. So the cloth is there, and the bare parts are covered with the skin. You know, if you, if you know the Bible, and you remember when Adam and Eve fell into sin, and they were, remember what they did? They were trying to put twig leaves. Then they were told, no, that is not what's going to help you. And some of us have a lot of twig leaves here. I've seen them on the streets. Tomb open, ties open, breast out. Twig leaves all are over. Even in the church, I've seen them. Uh, you will not go any far with those twig leaves. Then the Lord comes with a what? Those who know the Bible. With a what? A skin. And Adam and Eve were done what? Those who know the Bible. What was happening to Adam and Eve now? They were given not twig leaves for covering, but they were given a what? The lamp that was killed, the first death on the planet. When they were seeing, they were to cover them so that they live. The animals die, yet they will do what? Leave. Because he leaves. Yes, I can face tomorrow. Now, why are they leaving? They are sinners that are covered. Why is Jacob going to approach the father now? Because he is covered by the cloth of Yusuf and that one of the skin of the world. And most of us here, all of us are sinners and are naked in one way or the other. And today, the Lord is saying, I'm offering a cloth to cover you. Cover your nakedness. To forgive you and wash you. So that you can be blessed. I don't want to talk much, but therefore let me read. When I look at this text, I change how I breathe. Verse 22. Because I want to prepare for landing. And then you let me know if the, the water is in level that will baptize somebody here. Now, let's go verse 22 now. So Jacob went near to Isaac, his father. Do you see? What gives him the courage to now go near? What gives him the courage to go near? What? He's now covered. Before that one, he could not dare go. So now that is covered. He has the, the audacity, he has the courage less to go before the father to go and approach him because you don't get in far. That's why some people don't know. When we bring you here for blessing, some of you think that you are posting. We want you to be blessed. So they stay back in their rooms doing things that will harm them more. And yet we are bringing you closer here. Oh, thank God for this university. Uh, appointments, uh, what? Uh, we are bringing you here, my friend, to cover you so that you are saved. We mean well. So that you can come near to God. You are now covered. We, that's why we baptize people. You are washed and cleansed. Even though you are sinners. And we are all sinners. 22. So he went near his father. And he felt him and said. The voice. Is Jacob's voice. But the hands. Are the hands of what? That's also wrong. Because the hands are the hands of a goat. <laughs> the hand is not Jacob. Jacob is also not his house. It's who? 
But the, that's what the father is thinking because he's blind. So what happens? Then he said, I really my son, Isu. I do really the one he said, yes, I am. So he said, bring it near to me that I may eat of the, my son's game so that my soul may bless you. So he brought it near to him and he ate and brought with him wine and he drank. I want you to get these words. Let's see, Marita, so it's, I don't know. I, I, I was wondering, how come the Bible is neat this way when people are too blessed? Wow. I didn't see it that way. I took some glasses out and I take a deep breath. So even before the blessing, there must be the eating, but also coming near. That was not all. And he said, come near. That verse 20. This one put on the screen, verse 26. Then his father said to Isaac, come near now and kiss me, my son. Do you know why? He wanted to smell. He brought it close enough. How do you kiss people? From here to there, Mr. Adegu? Adegu is there. But can he kiss you from there? <laughs> it can never be. You must be this what? This close. That's why we want to bring people close. In the afternoon, we do not have any. We have a program which we do with what we call dignified men. We don't have to rush it over. Come close. Father is calling to come close. Because you cannot be blessed in the Father. Come close. And I've seen people like sitting as far as possible. But what they do not know, the blessing is found where? Close. Close. Closer. Closer closer and then after that one kissed the son now you read verse 27 and he came near and kissed him and he smelled the smell of his clothing and blessed him and said surely the smell of my son is like the smell of the field but now who was smelling what was those smelling it was the clothes and the skin not the man. Even when he put you, I, I, let me repeat this statement again and again. Those who wear perfume, hello, those who are perfumes, eh? made in France or where? Eh? Where are they made from? <laughs> Do you know any where them? You admit you are smelling not good, but you want to be covered, smell good. Ah. That's the admission you are making. Anytime you put on a perfume, eh? do you put them here also? Yeah, my daughter, <laughs> anytime you wear them, you are admitting, I smell bad, but I don't want to go bad smelling bad in people. So I do what? I wear perfume. So that is, hey, you're smelling nice. You are not smelling nice. It's the perfume, not you. You, you are rotten. <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> That's a fact. You, you quill him too. That's the truth. You are. Thank God for water and the perfume. And so this gentleman saying you smell, it's not that you're smelling good. He's smelling the clothes of somebody else. He's smelling the, the, the good skin. And then he opened the mouth and make the statements, which says, which the Lord blessed. Therefore, may God give you of the dew of heaven, of the fatness of the earth, and plenty of grain and wine. Let people serve you. And the nation bow down to you. Be master over your brethren. And let your mother son bow down to you. Cast be everyone who curses you. And bless be everyone who blesses you. Woo! He passed it. But who was being blessed really? In the month, in the mind of the father, who was being blessed? But the actual one who was being blessed. And why was that person being blessed? Why was it being blessed? Because of the covering, the cloth of issue, the goat of the skin, the smell of them, and the Father blessed them, and the blessing stays. Let me now conclude. Today, the Lord is offering the same. He knows you are a liar. He knows you are a thief. 
He knows you have killed many people. Some people even killed here. There are some children being, being killed here in Barasi. When you get pregnant, you flush them out. When you have been pregnant, now why do you murder another sin by murdering innocent one? See, see when they too quiet, too quiet, mommy, come on, listen, part. Just be a mother, don't kill. But he knows you have killed. Wait, wait. Even though now you look pretty, he knows it. He knows what you have done. He knows what you have smoked and what you have been drinking also here. But would you come and be covered by Christ's own righteousness? Because even him, when he, before he called the disciples, says, Now I will offer you my blood to ask the perfume to cover your sin and wash you. I will give you my body so that it becomes part of you, so that you will pass the test of blessings and be forgiven, and so you will be in heaven, not because you are right, but because you have accepted the righteousness of Christ. You have allowed the clothes to be clothed in the garment made and loomed in heaven, brought from outside to cover you who is thinking, who is smelling, who is a sinner. But because of that garment made in heaven, you can secure eternal blessings. Yes, you are a different person. The Lord wants to cover your sins. Is there anybody here who is saying, Pastor, I am a sinner. I need the clothes made from heaven. I need Christ to cover me. Cover my body so that I will not only be forgiven, but I will be blessed. Is there somebody here like that who said, I want that one? Can you stand if you're here? Somebody saying, Me? I want. This time, I allow you not to stand all. Now you can, those who like sitting, now you can sit. Because it's your choice. The other one, now I'm only saying, those who say, I want to be covered. And that's why we invite you this afternoon. We want to invite you this afternoon. At three, Adventists, Practice open communion. Now, is there anybody again? Let me just ask. We're saying, Yes, I have not been baptized. I want to be forgiven so that I go to the table to receive full blessings. I want to join our sister in baptism. See, let me see if you are here. Just raising your hand. I'm asking. If you know, thank God I've seen a hand there. Can that hand come? Just come. Then near the hand. Any other hand who want to join our sister to be covered? I'm saying, is there any other hand? Do you hear what I've just said? You know yourself. You know you are a sinner. You don't want to continue deceiving. You want to be covered and be protected by the Lord. If you're there, just come. We're there. We are not saying you're singing. Just come, my sister. Is there anybody else? You know, this is a serious matter. This is a very serious matter. This is a solemn occasion. This is life and death. Somebody will live here and receive curses forever. Or somebody will come here and be blessed for eternity. Is there anybody else? Yes, just come up here. Let's sing, pass me not again, Savior. And uh, if there's somebody who wants to join, you can come. For the last time, Karibu, it's okay. Thank God for you. If there's anybody who wants to join, now we have two that are going to see water. Then we'll join us at three. By the way, that's why we separated the two programs. If you are here, if you are still struggling, now is the opportunity to be covered. You are a bad, yes, but you can be made good. You are a sinner, yes, but you can be washed clean. You are a liar, yes, even now you are lying. That you, you think is strong when you belong here. But God can cover you if you come up. Come up closer. And the Lord will take care of you. So we'll sing that song for the, those dancers. And at the end of them, we'll pray. And if there's one more person who would want to come, please come. We had asked for that open door policy and we'll be happy. But even if they have these two, we will be very happy to baptize them. So let's them sing that one. What? I'm waiting for you to lead the singing. But if there's somebody who wants to come, just come. I'm very ready to invite you. Yes. If you are here and you want to come, now is the time. You can change the history of your life and leave this church blessed. Even though you came blessed, 
strongly. Yes, Lord, do not pass if you are there, me just walk and come. Yes, I'm serious. If you want to come, walk, come here. Don't be passed by. If you want to come, come now. We give you the last chance to be covered. I'm just waiting. And I will continue waiting. Be clothed. Thank you. If you want to come, come. It's okay, come. Bring her out. Come with her. By the way, you never know the children. Just bring her up. Just bring her up. It's okay. Come to the other side. We are giving you a chance. If there are little ones are willing to come. Yeah. Walk over. Give me power here. Go over there. Yes, yeah, just come over. It's now, not never. Just come over. You are the one we're looking for. Walk and come. Just walk out. Just bring all my cup. Just walk and come, please. Yes. Okay. I have one. Please come. It is now free to be covered. Why do you remain there? Up, down, wherever you are. There's one person here, please. We are tiring because of you. We want you to be covered. You know yourself. But God is saying, I am ready to forgive and set you free. Cover you so that you get blessing in this university and not leave a curse. Dr. Wahonya, you will do the closing prayer. The as we as we do wait for that one, the two uh, ministers will uh, be ready. I hope the water is in the right point. Sing one more song as we wait. One more song. I hope you're ready with whatever to prepare how to give the, the vows. Now we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve. You're coming? Yes. This one, not this one? Okay, 13, good. Yes. Us. We will know. We are ready preparing ourselves here. And we will have this one. Thank you for coming this morning. At least you have helped us to find quite a number that will be here. Now, we want to pray, then we'll be seated. Dr. Honya, you will do the prayer and then we will get seated after the prayer. And if there's somebody remaining, 
and we are not ending at us to that we are going a little bit the 12 30 time so that we get the water so let's dr honya pray after that one you sit down and sing when you sit down Heavenly Father, we want to thank you that we have heard your voice. We want to thank you for your Holy Spirit that has moved in our hearts and the Holy Spirit that has uh, prompted a number of the worshippers this afternoon to come so that they can be baptized in the waters of baptism, O oh God. We want to thank you, Holy Father, for this symbolism of baptism, the cleansing of sin that it represents, my Father. We pray that all of us will be washed by the precious blood of Jesus. And even as we prepare for the Holy Communion this afternoon, may we, may we be washed clean and clean and clean. Thank you so much for putting on each one of us the robe of Christ's righteousness. And now, dear Father, to you we do commit these souls who have given themselves, dear Father. They are beginning a new commitment with you. May you seal that commitment by filling them with your Holy Spirit. May it be that all of us will be blessed of you having listened to your voice speaking to us. Thank you for hearing our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, let's get seated. Now, if you are coming for baptism, please don't leave. Now, let me see. Those for baptism, please, now, uh, we want you to take the vows first before you go. Come, 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 come first. All of you, sorry, sorry. We'll get the vows first. Then by the time you come, you will come ready for baptism. All of them to come, please. 
If there's anybody who still remaining, come now. This is critical. We want, uh, just come, my sister. We will get the vows now. Then they go and do the changing other things. Then at the time they come, we baptize them. Anybody who want to come, these are still here. I saw somebody coming and got lost somewhere. <laughs> you can still come. Okay, how many we are have here now? Let's see those for baptism. You are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Okay, we have thirteen. And uh, I want to ask uh, Dr. Kasai to give them the vows. Then, as they go there to do the other things, we will then come back for baptism. Yes. Take the vows. Then you will go with them, Pastor. Pastor will go with them. And then the deaconess and the deacons, please, we want you there to help them. Whether they need to come with the gowns or whatever reasons, we don't mind. So long as they are baptized in the name of the Lord. Okay. Dr. Kasai. We would like to thank the Lord for touching your hearts so that you may take a decision for Christ this uh, afternoon. But we also thank you for accepting the voice of the Holy Spirit that talked to your heart. We usually ask uh, three questions because uh, we have gone the, through the 13 in the class. But since we did not have that chance, and as the pastor has said, who are we to say, wait if you have decided to follow Jesus? Because for him, he has accepted you. So allow me, instead of doing the short cut, to go all through the 13 questions that we usually ask. So you listen carefully to them, and if you agree, then you say, yes, I do when I stop asking the question. The question number one is, do you believe there is one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, a unity in three co-eternal persons? Yeah, you lift the, head, the hand and you say, yes, I do. Two. Do you accept the death of Jesus Christ on Calvary as the atoning sacrifice for your sins and believe that by God's grace, through faith in his shed blood, you are saved from sin and its penalty? Next. Do you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, believing that God in Christ has forgiven your sins and given you a new heart? And do you renounce the sinful ways of the world? Thank you. Do you accept by faith the righteousness of Christ you are intercessor in the heavenly sanctuary and accept his promise uh, of transforming grace and power to live a loving Christ-centered life in your home and before the world. I, I am not listening to yes, I do from others. Speak. You speak and you raise the hand. Thank you. Um, Next, do you believe that the Bible is God's inspired word, the only rule of faith and practice for the Christian? Do you covenant to spend time regularly in prayer and Bible study? Next, do you accept the Ten Commandments as a transcript of the character of God and a revelation of his will. Is it your purpose 
by the power of the indwelling Christ to keep this law, including the fourth commandment, which requires the observance of the seventh day of the week as the Sabbath for the Lord and the memorial of creation. Next. Do you look forward to the soon coming of Jesus and the blessed hope when this mortal sh shall put on immortality? As you prepare to meet the Lord, will you witness to his loving salvation by using your talents in personal soul winning endeavor to help others to be ready for his glorious appearing? Next. Do you accept the Bible teaching of spiritual gifts and believe that the gift of prophecy is one of the identifying marks of the remnant church? Next. Do you believe in church organization? Is it your purpose to worship God and to support the church through the tithes? and offerings and by your personal effort and influence next do you believe that your body is the temple of the holy spirit and will you honor god by caring for it avoiding the use of of that which is harmful and abstain from all unclean food from the use, manufacture, and sale of alcoholic beverage, from the use of the use, manufacture, and sale of tobacco in any of its form for human consumption, and from the misuse of or trafficking in narcotics or other drugs. Next. Do you know and understand the fundamental belief, uh, the fundamental Bible principles as taught by the Seventh day Adventist Church? Do you purpose, by the grace of God, to fulfill His will, ordering your life in harmony with these principles? Do you accept the New Testament teaching on baptism by immersion? and desire to be so baptized as a public expression of faith in Christ and his forgiveness of your sins? Last, do you accept and believe that the Seventh-day Adventist Church is the remnant church of the Bible prophecy and that people of every nation, race, and language are invited and accepted into its fellowship. Do you desire to be a member of this local congregation of the World Church? Okay. After taking those vows, we'll pray with you and the Lord will take care of you. Let's pray. Loving Father, we thank you for our friends whom have taken a vow, they will not keep it on their own. Cover them with your blood. Cover them with your cloth. As we plan to baptize them today, Father, baptize the Holy Spirit. Make them be centers of influence. Men and women who will champion the cause that you died for. Men and women that will be with you for eternity in heaven. Shield them for your cause. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, you will follow here, Paluku, you guide them. We will be waiting for you to come, and the two of you will go into the water. You follow this way. Now, as they go, let me say something here. They are soon to come. There are only 13. We'll baptize them quickly. But before we do that, let me tell you, Adventists practice open communion service. What do we mean by that one? That means every member who is a baptized Christian and you are willing to partake of the, pro of the program are invited. We don't close you around. 
So don't say I'm not an Adventist. Just say I am not a Christian. I don't want to participate. Do you hear me now? So when you walk and you don't come back at three, don't say you near an Adventist. That's for Adventists. No. Just say I have decided. Hold on, kidogo. My friend. Wewe, ngoja kidogo. When you go and you remain with like the let me use the, the, the medical term which we normally use. When you live with your soiled feet, the nurses and those who know some medicine knows what we mean by that term. That means it's their dirty. And you don't want it to be washed. You are taking it that you are refused to come to the table yourself. Not that Adventists have refused you to come. The only people who don't want to come are the following. Those who have not been baptized, don't come. Those who are children who have not been baptized, and those who op done, have done open, and I'm not saying open sin, exclude the guilty. But you can come to watch. We'll have the gallery for watching. You can come to see what takes place. That is also is not a closed interview. Otherwise, today is the best Sabbath of the school calendar. And I will thank you for your patience. As we wait for those friends to come, we baptize them, then we go home. And at three, we will come for our last service. Now, that is clear. If you miss it, you now know why you have missed it. And even if now you still do want to be baptized, don't let go. The music will sing. Give us some choice songs and sing with gusto. And let the accompaniment be now. now we want to hear good music as we wait for them to come here. It will take about less than 10 minutes. We are off this place. Let our patients continue there. You will watch. Doc, uh, professor, you have the floor.
not, O gentle Savior, hymn 569. As the church, we have added one more. We get the vows have come. While we were there, one more came. And we thank God we don't want to close the door. Even if you are still here, Dr. Kasai is up, will help you to the process. But you want to start with those who are ready. The minister is ready in the water. And the deacon nurses and the deacons are not here, but we don't mind. We will baptize people, whether they are there or not. Now we are ready to start the process. Give me who is ready, please. Get me those who are ready. 
Don't worry, you give me the one who's ready, not one more. So the ones that are ready, you bring them kindly so that we go on and have the baptism. Those who are ready, you are to take your places. Take your chance at your places. Yes. This is a very good moment so that this evening when we have the Lord's Supper. But if you are here, you can walk through that way, go to my office, you will be sorted out. Yes. You can walk through that door this way. Now we are ready. Please. We are ready now. Open for me that door now so that those who come and come, come. Okay. Let them come in. Come, come, come. I don't know who is keeping people in the corridor. We are ready for now. The minister is ready. The water is ready. Those who are ready, the men are ready, no problem. Slowly, slowly. To me, as the, the gentleman. Slowly. Okay. My brother. Because of your love to Christ, we are happy to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Slowly. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. I am next. Go slowly. Slowly. Watch their steps. Slowly. Okay. In your early ages, you have shown your commitment to be baptized. We therefore baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Slowly. Slowly. Jesus holds out a robe white as snow. Lord, I am saved. We are proud of you. You have chosen to start this walk when you are still young. We are happy to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. The ladies, we are waiting. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We are ready for the ladies. Where are they? Please bring them. Bring us that one. Bring us the ones that are ready. They're ready. Just come, my sister. Wow, we're happy. Just come. You get right, 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 walk right inside. Slowly, watch the steps. Watch the steps. Watch. One more. Good. It's okay, my sister, it's okay. My sister, God work in a miraculous way. You have surrendered this life to Christ. We therefore baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Down, down, down. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Next. Next.
just just move and go with you. It's okay if you want to go with that. We don't have a problem. Just go slowly, slowly. Not yet. There. Our sister, we are glad to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Thank you for good coverage. Just get in. You can go slowly. Slowly. Okay. Wow. Yes. My sister, it's never too late to come to God. We are happy to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Amen. You are next. Go with you slowly. 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 Last. There you go. Our sister, we thank God for you. You have done the right thing to surrender your life to Christ. We therefore baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. And you are doing very well. We are not seeing struggles. We are seeing beautiful people being baptized in a beautiful way. Watch one more. There. Yeah. Okay. Our sister, what a joy that we now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. It's done. Beautifully done. We'll go with you slowly. Slowly. Slowly, slowly, there. One more. It's okay, still the last. Good. Wow. It's okay, still. My sister, that art of surrender is good. We baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Next. Slowly. My sister. We thank God for you. We are glad to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. My sister. We are happy for you. Heaven rejoices. We now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A clap for her. Now, Vincent, we go. Okay, slowly. Now, Vincent, we thank God for you. We are excited that you made this choice. We therefore baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Now, I will ask you to stop Kidogo too. You have seen what God has done. And I want to thank you, our members. You know what is important. And you have stayed well in the church. May the Lord bless you. But you see, this is the right baptism. Before we pray, is there somebody who said now, not now, but next one, Pastor, I will be there. I will not be left behind anybody. We're saying the next baptism, I will be there. Not this one. This one now we have closed. I've seen a hand, two hands here. Any other? There's a hand there. Yes, that's three. Any other? Anybody in the gallery? Where? I'm still looking. There are three I've seen. Any other? My eyes are roving around. Okay. We will pray with those three. And uh, you want him to pray. I hope the hands are dry enough. Let him do the prayer. Holy God, creator of the universe, we thank you for this miracle of today. Accept your daughters and sons who today they have decided to make Jesus their personal savior. Help them so that they will overcome evil and we be ready to enter into your kingdom. And those who have said that they can be baptized next time, help them to make this decision fast. Help this your church to grow. Bless this university in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much for waiting. Now we will stand for the closing song. We will meet at three for the Lord's Supper. You are all invited. Let's stand for the closing song. We know what the closing song is. We know it. And then we will exit slowly and gently. Thank you for waiting. You have done good. Thumbs up for you. This is the tree for